So we're sitting on the veranda of the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. Uh, the building itself is known locally as the Villa Doyle, and it sits very majestically on the top of the main hill. The building had sat here for a long time just in disrepair, and a lot of people were quite sad about that because it's really a very beautiful building. But in post-Bahamian uh, history, po I mean post-independence uh, history, there was also a lot of debate as to whether we should keep these buildings that were a symbol of the colony. Uh, or whether they should be restored. So for a long time there was a sort of a struggle going on as to whether this building should be maintained. But then it was decided that, uh, also by a lot of artists from the community, that uh, I'm Bahamian, my family came in 1789, and so obviously I have very strong roots here. And uh, you know, we have to, we, there was a general consensus that we had to agree to tell the story of all the Bahamians. And so there was a, a sort of fight led by a great historian called Dr. Saunders, and uh, she really convinced uh, people to save this building, and she was really very fundamental in this being saved for the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas. The art development in the Bahamas is quite interesting. It is a very, very young nation. So first of all, there's that debate of what's Bahamian. Uh, is it Bahamian if it was made in 1960, when we were still a colony? Uh, so really what we do here is we kind of extract the stories of the history, there's a very nice uh, overview exhibition on the ground floor, which we try to keep up, uh, called From Columbus to Junkanoo. And that actually really tells the story of the Bahamas itself as a country, but also tells the story of the development of art. So, of course, uh, in the beginning, there were the Lucayans here. So uh, there was an indigenous population that were mostly, allegedly, completely wiped out by the Spanish. Uh, th there might have been some survivors, but no one knows, and there's very, very little archaeological uh, remains. So there's a few things in the historical museum, but there's no artifacts to speak of. Interestingly, the exhibition downstairs opens with an artwork by a very young Bahamian artist who poses the question of what would have happened if the Lucayans had stayed, and he's created these masks of uh, a kind of hybrid between a Lucayan Indian and an African, and they're very beautiful. So, um, so that show really tells the story. And what really happened in very basic terms was artists came down here in the 1800s, people that you'd know like Winslow Homer, like Alfred Bierstadt, uh, very famous painters from the American school. And they were mostly coming as tourists. So the images they created were these sort of touristic images to be like, look how beautiful it is. Come down here and have a vacation. And so the first Bahamian artists who really started painting in the 40s and 50s, I'd say, uh, did the same thing. They, they looked at themselves the way foreigners looked at us, right? So people tend to think Bahamian art is, is nice landscape painting. But I think what really is Bahamian art is this growth that you see take place where the tradition of oil painting, which is particularly European, becomes melded in the 60s and 70s with this growing consciousness of uh, Africa and of African roots and the African movement. And you start to see different techniques coming in and different kind of wood carving. And this gets sort of amalgamated into a really exciting kind of artwork, which I think is very uniquely Bahamian. And you see that here. And it even has a sound to it, because our greatest art form is Junkanoo, which is our carnival. And you see the, cost, the colors of the costumes, and you see the, the movement. And you see, and as I said, you can almost hear the color. And I think that's something that's really Bahamian art that you see through the collection. Well, Montague Foreshore is the painting uh, that you're speaking to of the regatta at Montague Foreshore. It, it's a very common place to hold the regattas because it's where Paradise Island and the end of New Providence kind of meet and you get this sort of wind tunnel. So it's always windy there. So it's by the, the Royal Nassau Sailing Club. And, uh, and so that's always, it, very often you see the regattas taking place there when they come to town. And so it's nice to have that painting in the collection because it's, it's really a part of Bahamian life that you'll see the beach at Montague, you'll see a lot of Bahamians because it's, it's an excuse for a big party, right? Everyone goes to like watch the regatta, but really they're there to cook out and have some beer. So, <laughs> so that's a, it's a big part of life still. Maybe not the sailing so much, but the cooking out and the beer.